Hare Krishna, everyone. Please accept my humble obeisances. Oh, great glory to Srila Prabhupada. Today, tonight's reciters are Amoga Prabhu as some Sanskrit and Uma Mataji uh, reciting in English. Um, Uma Mataji, are you online? Yes, Hare Krishna Mataji. Hare yes. Krishna, everyone. Hare Krishna. Uh, Prabhu, when you're ready, please start with invocation. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Mataji. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Canto 2, Chapter 4, The Process of Creation. Sota Bhuvacham Vayasa Kehiti Vachaha Tatva Nishaya Matmanaham Upadhadya Matim Krishne Autereyaha Satim Yadhat Sutta Goswami said, Maharaj Parikshit, the son of Uttara, after hearing the speeches of Sukadeva Goswami, which were all about the truth of the self, applied his concentration faithfully upon Lord Krishna. Atma Jaya Sutagara Pasudravina Bandushu Rajecha Avikale Nitcham Virodham Mamatam Jahau Maharaj Parikshit, as a result of his wholehearted attraction for Lord Krishna, was able to give up all deep rooted affection for his personal body. His wife, his children, his palace, his animals like horses and elephants, his treasury house, his friends and relatives, and his undisputed kingdom. Aprachacha imam yevadham yenmam prachata satta maha krishnanu bhava shravani shraddhadano mahamanaha O great sages, the great soul Maharaj Parikshit, constantly wrapped in thought of Lord Krishna, knowing well of his imminent death, renounced all sorts of fruitive activities, namely acts of religion, economic development, and sense gratification, and thus fixed himself firmly in his natural love for Krishna and asked all these questions exactly as you are asking me. Raja Vuvacham Samichinam Vacho Brahman Sarvadnyasya Tavanagha Tamo Visiryate Mahyam Harehe Katayataha Katam Maharaj Parikshit said, O learned Brahmana, you know everything because you are without material contamination. Therefore, whatever you have spoken to me appears perfectly right. Your speeches are gradually destroying the darkness of my ignorance, for you are narrating the topics of the Lord. Bhoya eva vivitsami bhagavan atma mayayam I beg to know from you how the personality of Godhead by his personal energies creates these phenomenal, <coughs> sorry, phenomenal universes as they are, which are inconceivable even to the great demigods. Yata gopati vibhu yata samyachate punaham Yam yam sektim upasritya, purushekti hi parahpuman, atmanam kridayan kridan, karoti vikaroti cha. Kindly describe how the Supreme Lord, who is all powerful, engages his different energies and different expansions in maintaining and again winding up the phenomenal world in the sporting spirit of a player. Nunam Bhagavato Brahman Harehi Adputa Karmanaham 
निर्विभाव्यम इवा भाति कभी भिक्षा पिचे स्थितम सॉरी आई कॉन्ट सी द स्क्रीन थैंक यू माता जी O learned Brahmana, the transcendental activities of the Lord are all wonderful, and they appear inconceivable, because even great endeavors by many learned scholars have still proved insufficient for understanding them. Yata gunam tu prakute he yoga pat kramaso pivam vibhati bhur shaspe kaha purvan karma ni janma bhi. The supreme personality of Godhead is one, whether he alone acts with the modes of material nature, or simultaneously expands in many forms, or expands consecutively to direct the modes of the of nature. We chikit chitam yetan me bravi tu Bhagavan yata sabde Brahmani nishna taha parasmimsha Bhavan kalu. Finally, clear up all these doubtful inquiries because you are not only vastly learned in the Vedic literatures and self-realized in transcendence, but are also a great devotee of the Lord and are therefore as good as a personality of Godhead. Sota bhavacham iti upa mantri to radhya gunanu katane hare he. Sutta Goswami said, when Sukdeva Goswami was thus requested by the king to describe the creative energy of the personality of Godhead, he then systematically remembered the master of the senses, Sri Krishna, and to reply properly, he spoke thus. अनुपलक्षे who for the creation of the material world accepts the free modes of nature he is a complete whole residing within the body of everyone and his ways are inconceivable bho yo namaha sadruji chinachi desatam asambhavaya akila sattva murdhaye pum sam punaha paramahamsha asrame vyavistanam anamrugya dasu se I again offer my respectful obeisances unto the form of complete existence and transcendence, who is the liberator of the pious devotees from all distresses and the destroyer of the further advances in atheistic temperament of the non-devotee demons, for the trans transcendentalist, transcendentalist who are situated in the topmost. A spiritual perfection. He grants their specific destinations. Namo namaste tu rushbhaya satpatam vidhora kasta ya muhu kuyogi nam nirasta samyati seena radhasa swadamni brahmani ramsite namaha. Let me offer my respectful obeisances unto him, who is associate of the members of the Yadu dynasty. and who is always a problem for the non devotees he is a supreme enjoyer of both the material and the spiritual worlds yet he enjoys his own abode in the spiritual sky there is no one equal to him because his transcendental opulence is immeasurable yet kirtanam yasmaranam yadikshanam yet bandhanam yashravanam yadarhanam उदियंस 
prayers, hearing, and worship can at once cleanse the effects of all sins of the performer. Vichachena yet cheruno pasadanat, sangam vidasya abhitu antaratmanaha, vindanti hi brahmakatim gataklamaha, thus may subhadras revase namo namaha. Let me offer my respectful obeisances again and again unto the all auspicious Lord Shri Krishna, the highly intellectual, simply by surrendering unto his lotus feet or relieved of all attachments to present and future existences and without difficulty progress towards spiritual existence. Tapaspino dana para isaspino. Manaspino mantri vidah sumangalaha, she mamna vinanti vinayadat panam, thus may subhadras revase namo namaha. Let me offer my respectful obeisances unto the all auspicious Lord Shri Krishna again and again, because the great learned sages, the great performers of charity, the great workers of distinction, the great philosophers, and mystics, the great chanters of the Vedic hymns, and the great followers of Vedic principles cannot achieve any fruitful result without dedication of such great qualities to the service of the Lord. Hirata Hunandra Pulinda Pulkasha, Abhirashumpa Yavanaha Kasadayaham, Yeni Japapa, the Pasriasriaha, Sudjintasme Prava Vishneve Namaham. Irata Huna Antra Pulinda Pulkasha Abira Shumba Yavana, members of the Kasa races and even others addicted to sinful acts can be purified by taking shelter of the devotees of the Lord due to his being the supreme power. I beg to offer my respectful obeisances unto him. He is a super soul and the supreme lord of all self-realized souls. He is a personification of the Vedas, religious scriptures and austerities. He is worshipped by Lord Brahma and Shiva and all those who are transcendental to all pretensions. Being so revered with awe and veneration, may that Supreme Absolute be pleased with me. Sriya Patihi, Agni Patihi, Prajapatihi, Diyam Patihi, Loka Patihi, Dara Patihi, Patirikati Chanda Karushni Satpatam, Prasidatam Me Bhagavan Satam Patihi. May Lord Shri Krishna, who is a worshipable Lord of all devotees, the protector and glory of all the Kings like the Andaka and Vishni of the Yadu dynasty, the husband of all goddesses of fortune, the director of all sacrifices, and therefore the leader of all living entities, the controller of all intelligence, the proprietor of all planets, spiritual and material, and the supreme incarnation of on the earth, the supreme in all, be merciful upon me. Yadangriya bidjana samadhi dhotaya dhyanu pasinti tatvamatmanaham vadanti chetrat kavyo yataruchim sami mukundo bhagavan prasidatam. It is a personality of Godhead Shri Krishna who gives liberation. By thinking of his lotus feet at every second, following in the footsteps of authorities, the devotee in trance can see the absolute truth. The learned mental speculators, however, think of him according to their whims. May the Lord be pleased with me. Prachodita yena pura saraswati vitanvata jasa satin smritim krudi swalakshana pradura vutya lasetaha samirushinam rushabah prasiratam. May the Lord, who in the beginning of the creation amplified the potent knowledge of Brahma from within his heart and inspired him with full knowledge of creation and of his own self, and who appeared to be generated from the mouth of Brahma, be pleased with me. 
भूतेर महित ब्रिया इमा पुरो विभुखो निर्माय सेहते यदमोशु पुरुषा भूमते गुणान शोड़ से शोड़ साथ में कहा सोलम कृषिस्त भगवान वचाम से मे मे द सुप्रीम पर्सनालिटी ऑफ गॉड हेड who enlivens the materially created bodies of the elements by lying down within the universe and who in his purusha incarnation causes a living being to be subjected to the 16 divisions of material modes which are his generator be pleased to decorate my statements namah tasmay bhagavate vasudevaya vedase I offer my respectful obeisances unto Srila Vyasadeva, the incarnation of Vasudeva, who compiled the Vedic scriptures. The pure devotees drink up the nectarian transcendental knowledge dropping from the lotus like mouth of the Lord. Naradaya vipruchyate vedagarbho abhidat sakshad yadaha hariratmanaha. My dear King Brahma, the firstborn on being questioned by Narada, exactly apprised him on this subject as it, it had been directly spoken by the Lord to his own son, who was impregnated by Vedic knowledge from his very birth. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Amoga Prabhu and Uma Mataji. So beautiful to hear how flowing you can recite the verses, Amoga Prabhu. Really wonderful to hear. Also, your nice accent, Uma Mataji. Hey devotees, dear devotees, welcome to tonight's uh, chat session. Today we will continue reading from the second canto, chapter number four, and we'll be discussing verses three and four, chapter entitled The Process for creation, of Creation. Before we start, let's recite the Mangala Charana prayers together. You can do so, be unmuted, Max, please. Om Ajnana Timirandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshur Unmalitam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Manobhistam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Swapadantikam Vande Ham Shri Guru Shri Yata Padakamalam Shri Gurun Vaishnavam Sya Shri Rupam Sahagrajatam Sahagana Raghunatam Bitam Tam Sajivam Sadvetam Savadutan Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakam Bitam Sya E Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namastate Tapta Kanchana Gorange Radhe Vrindavaneshwari Rishabhanu Sutadevi Pranamami Hari Priye Vanchakalpa Trubhyasya Kripa Sindhu Vivacha Patitanam Pavane Pyo Aishnave Pyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhara Shri Vashari Kora Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare 
Namam Vishnupadaya Krishna Prashtaya Bhutale Shri Mate Bhakti Veda Swami Nitinamini Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyabhati Pascha Deshatarine Shila Prabhupada Ki Jai Okay, so we're reading text number three to four. Aprachache mam evartam yalmam prachata satamaha Krishna nubhava shravane shradhadhano mahamanaha shamstam vignaya sanyasya Karma Trivarji comes Jayat Vasudeve Bhagavati Atma Bhavam Ridam Gataha Word for word meanings Papracha asked Cha also Imam this Eva exactly like Artam purpose Yat that Mom unto me, Prachata, you are asking Satamaha, or great sages, Krishna Anubhava, wrapped in thought of Krishna, Shravane in hearing, Shradadhanaha, full of faith, Maha Manaha, the great soul, Samstam, death, Vignaya, being informed, Sanyasya, renouncing, Karma, fruit of activities, Tri Varjikam, the three principles of religion, economic development and sense gratification. Cha also, Yat, what it may be. Vasudeva, unto Lord Krishna, Bhagavati, the personality of Godhead, Atma Bhavam, attraction of love, Vridham, firmly fixed, Gataha, achieved. Translation and purport, Vashila Prabhupada. O great sages, the great soul Maharaj Parikshit, constantly wrapped in thought of Lord Krishna, knowing well of his imminent death, renounced all sorts of fruitive activities, namely acts of religion, economic development, and sense gratification, and thus fixed himself firmly in his natural love for Krishna, and asked all these questions exactly as you are asking me. The three activities of religion, economic development and sense gratification are generally attractive for conditioned souls struggling in exist for existence in the material world. Such regulated activities prescribed in the Vedas are called the Karma Kandiya conception of life, and householders are generally recommended to follow the rules just to enjoy material prosperity, both in this life and in the next. Most people are attracted by such activities. Even in the activities of the modern godless civilization, people are more concerned with economic development and sense gratification without any religious sentiments. As a great emperor of the world, Maharaj Parikshit had to observe yeah. such regulations of the Vedic Karma Kandiya section. But by his slight association with Shukdev Goswami, he could perfectly understand that Lord Krishna, the absolute personality of Godhead, Vasudev, for whom he had a natural love since his birth, is everything. And thus he fixed his mind firmly upon him renouncing all modes of Vedic karma kandiya activities. This perfectional stage is attained by a jnani after many, many births. The jnanis or the empiric philosophers endeavoring for liberation are thousands of times better than the fruit of workers. 
and out of hundreds of thousands of such gyanis, one is liberated. And out of hundreds and thousands of such liberated persons, even one person is rarely found who can firmly fix his mind onto the lotus feet of Lord Shri Krishna, as declared by the Lord himself in the Bhagavad Gita 7.19. Maharaj Parikshit is specially qualified with the words Maha Manaha, which puts him on an equal level with the Mahatmas described in the Bhagavad Gita. In the later age also, there have been many Mahatmas of this type, and they also gave up all karma kandiya conceptions of life, solely and wholly depending on the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Krishna. Lord Chaitanya, who is Lord Krishna himself, taught us in his Shastaka 8. Ashlasya vapadaratam pinastumam. Ardhashana marma atam karotava yatatatava vidhatu lampato matpranam natas tusa eva na paraha. Lord Krishna, who is the lover of many devotees, women, may embrace this fully surrendered maidservant, or may trample me with his feet, or he may render me broken hearted by not being present before me for a long duration of time, but still is nothing less than the absolute Lord of my heart. Shila Rupa Goswami spoke thus, Virachaya mahi dandam dina bandhu dayami va gatirhiyana bhavata kachid anya mamasti Nipata to sata koti nid param vanavabaha tadha pikila padaya stuyate chata kena. O Lord of the poor, do what you like with me. Give me either mercy or punishment. But in this world, I have none to look to except your Lordship. The chatak bird always prays for the cloud regardless of whether it showers rain, rains or throws a thunderbolt. The Madhavendra Puri, the grand spiritual master of Lord Chaitanya, took leave of all karma kandiya obligations in the following words. Sandhya bhadana bhadram ashtu bhavato bho snana tupyam namo vyo deva pitarasya Tarpana vido naham shama shantyatam yatra kwapi nishadhaya yadhava yadava kalotamasya kam kam shadvishaha smaran smaran hagam aramitad alamanya kim anyename. O my evening prayer, all good unto you. My morning bath, I bid you goodbye. O demigods and forefathers, please excuse me. I am unable to perform any more offerings for your pleasure. Now I have decided to free myself from all reactions to sins simply by remembering anywhere and everywhere the great descendant of Yadu and the great enemy of Kamsa, Lord Krishna. I think that this is sufficient for me. But what is the use of further endeavors? Srila Madhavendra Puri said further, Mogdhamam nigatanto niti nipuna Rato muhurva idikaha Mandam bandava Sanchaya jadadiyam Mukta daraha sodaraha Unmatam danino viveka Chaturaha kamam mahadan dhambikam Muktam nashat shamate managhapi 
Managovinda Padash Priham. Let the sharp moralist accuse me of being illusioned. I do not mind. Experts in Vedic activities may slander me as being misled. Friends and relatives may call me frustrated. My brothers may call me a fool. The wealthy Mammonites may point me out as mad. And the learned philosophers may assert that I am much too proud. Still, my mind does not budge an inch from the determination to serve the lotus feet of Govinda, though I am unable to do, so, do it. And also, Prahlad Maharaj said, Dharmatma kama iti yo biitas divarga ishatrahi nayadhamo vividha chavarta manye tadetad akilam nighamasya satyam swapmatpanam swadhur suridha param masya pumsha Religion, economic development, and sense gratification are celebrated as three means of attaining the path of salvation. Of these, ikshatrahi, especially, namely, knowledge of the self, knowledge of fruitive activities, and logic, and also politics and economy, economics are different means of livelihood. All these are different subjects of Vedic education, and therefore I consider them temporary engagements. On the other hand, surrendering onto the Supreme Lord Vishnu is a factual gain in life, and I consider it to be the ultimate truth. Bhagavatam 7, 6, 26. The whole matter is concluded in the Bhagavad Gita 241. Vyavasayatmika buddhi, or the absolute path of perfection. Sri Bhaladev Vijubhushan, a great Vaishnava scholar, defines this as Bhagavat Harshjana Rupaika Nishkama Karma Bir Vishuddha Chitaha. Accepting transcendental loving service to the Lord is the prime duty, free from fruit of the action. So, Parikshit Maharaj was perfectly right when he firmly accepted the lotus feet of Lord Krishna, renouncing all karma, kandiya, conceptions of life. So, this verse has been spoken by Sutta Goswami to the sages of Naimasharanya. And in this verse, he is glorifying Maharaj Parikshit. And what is his particular glorification? He is glorifying Parikshit Maharaj for renouncing any tinge of uh, contamination to his devotion to Lord Krishna. And what are the contaminations described here? Fruit of activities, namely the act of religion, economic development, and sense gratification. Atha, karma, and dharma. Dharma is religion, economic development is atha. And sense gratification is karma. And he was able to fix his mind firmly in the natural love for Krishna. And in that situation, he asks Shukdev Goswami beautiful questions. Srila Prabhupada's purport to this verse is simply magnificent. Simply magnificent. And Srila Prabhupada um, quotes three great personalities 
one of them being the Lord himself, quotes Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he quotes Rupa Goswami, he quotes Prahlad Maharaj, and he quotes Madhavendra Puri. Madhavendra Puri being the spiritual master of Ishvara Puri, who was the guru of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Now, what is the common theme of all these verses that Srila Prabhupada has quoted? The common theme is unalloyed, pure, unmotivated devotional service to Krishna. And such devotional service, such type, such quality of devotional service is very, very rare. And Srila Prabhupada quotes uh, of Krishna from the Bhagavad Gita to explain how there are so many thousands of people who are following the Karma Kandiya. And out of that, you may get a few thousands of jnanis. And of the jnanis, you may get a few people who are endeavoring for perfection. And out of those who are endeavoring for perfection, hardly one knows Krishna and truth. And that is the bhakta, the devotee. Uh, this verse, in one sense, is very sobering. Because it's completely speaking out against karma kandya. Karma kandya means performing Vedic activities with the purpose of getting some sense gratification or something in return. Now, in the purport, Prabhupada mentions that Maharaj Parikshit as the emperor of the world he had to perform some karma kandi activities. And generally, karma kandi activities are meant uh, for the pleasure, pleasure or appeasement of the demigods. And he said, as a king, um, he had some obligations to do this. And it seems that during the reign of Maharaj Parikshit, he was accepting such activities in his kingdom. But now, towards the stage of his life where he's about to die, he gave up any consideration. He gave up any consideration of such activities. His sole purpose was to fix his mind onto the lotus feet. Of Krishna. Now, this verse is somewhat relevant to us um, the three personalities of Srila Prabhupada quoted Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was a sannyas, Rupa Goswami was sannyas, Prahlad Maharaj was a little boy completely renounced, and Madhavendra Puri was a sannyas. So all of these um, verses or this mood or this consciousness um, is coming from personalities who are completely renounced, 100% engaged in the service of Lord Krishna. Now sometimes we wonder about ourselves. We wonder whether we are eligible to give up all karma, kandiya activities. Sometimes devotees say, well, we are not renounced. Uh, we have obligations to our parents who give us this body. We have obligations to the great sages who give us knowledge. We have obligations to the demigods who supply different necessities of life. 
We have obligations to the forefathers who have given us so much, who left so much for us. We have obligations to family members. When one is completely surrendered to Krishna, then we can say stop all karma kandi activities. But we are not on that level. So maybe we are obligated to still perform. And we see this among devotees, especially among the householders. They feel that they've not reached the stage where they can give up karma kandi activities. Because that is for some people who have 100%, 100% dedicated in the service to Lord Krishna. Um, so what is the, is the real understanding? Should we follow the mood and consciousness of Maharaj Parikshit, who gave everything up, of the personalities that are quoted in this verse? Actually, you know, we are living in the material world. Our situation is very, very precarious. Uh, as householders, we are more in contact with the material nature. And Prabhupada used to give the example that, um, you know, if we come in contact with someone who is infected with a disease, we are likely to contract the disease. So, you know, we are trying to follow the path of bhakti. Because we are in contact with the material nature, sometimes we take on the, the disease of material nature which is Atha, Kama, Dharma. And we feel that there's a need to engage in these activities, to worship the demigods and so on. But one on the path of pure devotional service, Uttama Bhakti, Srila Rupa Goswami has clearly said, we should give this all up. And Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, just surrender to me, Sarva Dharma Parichitya. Give up, abandon all varieties of religion and just surrender unto me. I will protect you from all self reaction. Do not fear. Do not fear. Krishna is saying that. So Krishna is saying, do not fear. If you surrender to me, If you surrender to me, I will give you protection from everything. There is no need to engage in any other process. We should simply fix our mind on Krishna and engage in his pure devotional service. If we start to indulge in the material nature in any shape or form, we will contract the disease of wanting to engage in Atha, Kama, Dharma. And uh, we see this even among uh, devotees who come to ISKCON. They feel that they need to engage in this Karma Kandya. There is absolutely no need to do that. And in terms of of surrendering. We understand that surrendering is a process. As long as we are on the path of surrendering, Krishna will give us protection. All our attention, Prabhupada quotes Rupa Goswami. And he quotes in this verse, Shila Rupa Goswami quotes the Chatak word. And the Chatak bird is a very special bird because no matter how thirsty it is, 
It will never take any water from any other source but the cloud. It will only drink water from the cloud. No other source. So Srila Rupa Goswami is saying the same way, same thing. The devotee of Krishna will only look towards Krishna in all respects. Even if he feels he's being punished, as Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, he will not forsake his devotion to Lord Krishna. He will not look anywhere else. He will not go anywhere else for shelter. And this is what we are trying to learn. We have to learn to uh, immunize ourselves. Prabhupada says, if you are just like during COVID, if we are taking the COVID injections, uh, we are immunized against the COVID virus. But if we're not, then we may contract it. So in the same way, uh, being prone to being unchaste and to go elsewhere, we've got to immunize ourselves. Because on a daily basis, you know, we interact with materialistic persons. We eat food sometimes cooked by materialistic persons. So we've got to immunize ourselves by taking only Krishna Prashadam, by chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, listening to Krishna Katha and performing devotional service. Then this tendency to want to perform karma, kandi activities won't arise. Sometimes people think, well, I won't do it for myself, but I'll do it for my children and my family members. Even that is a contamination. We are seeing here from the example of, of Maharaj Parikshit. He just focused himself, his attention, nothing but pure devotional service. And this is the unique nature of what Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to give. This is the unique nature of um, the mood of the Vrajavasis. It's Krishna and only Krishna. And no Arthur, no Kama, no Dharma. Srila Prabhupada also in the end of the purport, he quotes this wonderful verse. Vyavasayat uh, This verse, Prabhupada says, played a very important part in his, uh, in his life. Uh, when he read this verse and he read the commentary of Sri Baladev Vijibhushan, who was a great Vaishnava scholar, who said, single-pointed single-pointed intelligence, single-pointed determination. Come what may, I will only stick to the transcendent loving services, Krishna, as my prime duty, as prime duty, free from any desire for fruit of activities, not wanting anything from Krishna. And Prakira um, Prabhupada concludes by saying, Maharaj Padikshit was perfectly right when he firmly accepted the lotus feet of Krishna, renouncing all karma, kandiya, conceptions of life. So, Mahajana Yena, Gata Sapanta, we follow in the footsteps of the great Vaishnavas, the great Mahajans, <laughs> the great devotees of the Lord. We follow in the footsteps of Maharaj Parikshit. Um, we will never deviate ourselves to any other process but the uh, service to Lord Krishna and the service to the Vaishnavas. So very instructive verse for us. We always need to be vigilant. These things are very subtle. Uh, they creep in. We think there is no harm. 
you know, if I do some karma kandi activities. Um, but that's not pure devotion in service. Because we're looking for something outside and beyond Krishna. So we'll stop here. We'll take any questions or any comments anyone has, realizations. Um, there's one thing, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, when he performed his pastimes, one of the pastimes he performed was the the cleansing of the Gundicha temple. First, Mahaprabhu had the devotees and himself he was engaged, they swept the floor of the Gundicha temple. Then they gave it a second sweep. Then they took little sticks and they went to each groove and they took out any dirt that was there. Then after they had swept and they had taken little sticks and extricated any dirt, then they brought water and they washed the temple. They cleansed the temple till there was not any speck of dust or dirt. So in the same way, our acharyas have said that if we want to achieve the goal, Krishna is supremely pure. If we want to contact the supremely pure, we must be supremely pure. We must remove any traces within our hearts, any traces that may exist for Atha, Karma, Dharma, and even Moksha has to be removed. And it's very subtle. These elements creep in very subtle in different shapes and forms. We have to be very vigilant. We have to immunize ourselves by proper practice of Krishna consciousness. Hare Krishna. Any questions or comments? Corrections? Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. Yes. Please accept my humble obeisances. This is my past speaking. Wow. Um, Prabhuji, absolutely a wonderful class. I don't know what to say because you've taken out so many doubts about this Karmakanda and how subtly these things creep in without your realization and how to. I mean, just by uh, following the rules strictly and focusing. As you focus for your exam, just when the exam is near, you have to only focus on that subject. The same way, like focusing very intensely, um, we may be able to get to that goal. Absolutely a wonderful, very heart-touching Prabhuji. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Yeah, we have to practice our Krishna consciousness very alertly very attentively and uh, you know Mahaprabhu also used to give the example of the Bhakti Lata beach the creeper of devotion and he said how they are while you're watering the seed and it sprouts you're also watering the weeds so weeds will creep up weeds will creep up and uh, we must be very alert to know what those weeds are and we should pull it out. We've been given the purest, the highest, and uh, it's achievable. The process is very powerful. It's achievable, but it takes diligence, attentiveness, and sincere practice. So, oh, um, and just uh, extending that same thing, Prabhuji, obviously. Uh, we were trying to see, like some people, all of Amen. Um, Parishit Maharaj took uh, seven days to um, reach to the end of his, after listening to the Bhagavad Gita, to attain um, liberation, I would say, or whether liberation or not. Um, whereas Khatwanga, Maharaj, one prahar, two and a half hours um, to achieve. So the question comes again. 
when things can be achieved in such a short time. Obviously, it was with full concentration um, that in you know, two and a half hours, he could still achieve the same result. Whereas for some people, then they have to take many, many lifetimes mm -hmm. and they still cannot reach that. Mm -hmm. So why is that? Why is that? Why is that? Why is that some people take so many years? Is it because they're not attentive? Or is it, uh, is it, I mean, it's always full of doubts and not giving, not fully surrendering? Or uh, we because, can, uh, yeah, we can look at it different, from different angles. One angle we can look at it is that the person who, who surrenders very quickly is they carrying a lot of surrender from the previous life. And they're just completing the process. That's one perspective. Another perspective is that this process is largely dependent on mercy. Um, and the whole process, in one sense, it's about twofold. One is about purification, and one is is attachment. We know that when we become very Krishnaized like the sun, Krishna Surya Sama, when Krishna is present, um, uh, you know, he can cleanse us of all contamination. So um, it depends in one sense practice, like those who are satisfied with um, Nama Parad, uh, it'll take them longer. Those who are satisfied with Nama Bas, it'll take them less longer. And those who are just going for Sudhanam, the pure chanting, um, uh, you know, it'll take them much quicker. So it's it's twofold, just like you know, that we hear from the Damodar Leela, two fingers, two short. One is our effort, the other is mercy. So those that are make it in one life, those make it in a very short time. They could possibly be carrying it from previous life. Or alternatively, um, they've either got some special mercy or we can see in their lives, they've really made an effect. They were greedy, they had the lolium for, for this. So there's few factors there. Thank you, thank you so much, Mara. thank you. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Prabhu, thank you so much for the class. Um, can I just clarify, sorry if um, you've covered this already in the lecture, I joined a little late, but um, the difference between Karma Kanda and just doing your everyday um, activities, because you said you don't have to engage in Karma Kanda. So how to stop our regular household uh, societal duties becoming karma kanda and how to keep on that platform and keep it devotional service orientated? Yeah, Krishna. just a few few clarifications. Uh, there's a difference between doing your normal household duties and karma kandia. Karma kandia is a is a Vedic um, process where one worships demigods, forefathers, or other personalities for some sense gratification, some economic developments, or some religiosity, not connected with Krishna. And karma oh, activities, that's sep separate. So when one is doing one's normal household duties, that's not karma kandiya. That's not karma kandiya. Karma Kandiya is when you are doing certain Vedic rituals with the purpose of getting something outside pure devotion to Krishna. Is that clear, Gorangi Gopi? Yes, thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Vinda Vanchandra Guru. Hare Krishna, Krishna Vani Mataji. Please accept my humble obeisance. All your to Sri Gurus and Goranga. And Shri Prabhupada. Prabhuji, yes, you are saying it's very true that, you know, like, you know, by the mercy of Srila Prabhupada, we come to know about, you know, like, 
इंस्टेड ऑफ व्यवसायिक व्यवसायिक का बुद्धि यू नो एक गुरु नंदना Shilapro Pa taught us that yes, Krishna is the supreme, and when you take shelter of Him, then all the other demigods, everybody gets satisfied. So we don't have to, you know, like worship or you know, like go here and there. But just, just keep, you know, like stay in Krishna consciousness and continue. So we're just on the process. We're trying, but. Uh, It'll take time, but still, at least we have that in mind. That yes, when you surrender to Krishna or worship Krishna, you don't have to worry about any other demigods. It says in Bhagavad Gita, in Bhagavatam, everywhere. So, yes, very much so. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. When devotee um posted a very nice verse the other day, um. But you can ask your questions while I try to find out where it is. Anyone got any other comments or questions? Okay, maybe I can't find it right now. Anyway, I'll post it. Maybe it's a beautiful verse. Basically, the verse says, "When a devotee son surrenders to Krishna, and." becomes neglectful of any of the obligations to the debtors that he has. Uh, One thousand sages come forward and fulfill those obligations on behalf of the devotee, and that's a verse from the uh, from the Padma Purana. Yeah. It's true, Prabhupada. In a form, that one is when you totally, fully surrender. Then that does not apply, isn't it? Uh, for us, we still have to continue. <laughs> well, what does it surrender mean? And and you know, as I was saying, does that mean you have to give up everything? Be cent percent engaged. It's actually the consciousness. Uh, okay. You know, it's. it's Surrender, in one sense, is not an activity; it's a state of consciousness. Yeah. Therefore, sometimes Prashila Prabhupada used to say, "My householder duties, they are my householder disciples; they are sannyasis also." Mm. So, sannyasi is not a dress, and it's not a it's sannyasi is not a dress and a danda. Mm. Sannyasi is a state of consciousness. Yeah. So you know, one one can. You know, be a householder. One can be, you know, performing household duties, but the consciousness is, you know, I am <laughs> surrendered to Krishna. I don't, I don't see any refuge. I don't seek any refuge outside of Krishna. Mm -hmm. Krishna can do as he pleases if he wants to give me. You know, I will do my duties. Yeah. I'll do my duties, but everything's up to Krishna. So. Such a person, such a devotee, even even their householder life, if they mm -hmm. have that consciousness, then um, they are not obligated to perform any duties. Any oh, kind of yeah, I thought you know, like you have to be fully, totally, hundred percent surrendered. Then you know, but thank you for clarifying, Prabhu. Yes. And the example is you know Bhakti Vinod Thakur. Yes, okay. you know he was you know. He stayed in his grihastha life, but how surrendered he was, you know, and how much time and how much he did, my God, it was incredible. Yeah, Shila yeah. Prabhupada, from his birth, he was in that consciousness. Although he married, he had children, he he had a business. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Shila Prabhupada was hundred percent surrendered to Krishna. Yeah. Uh, forgive me if I got it wrong. Uh, my understanding is not clear about the demigods. If they are similarly in a position as we are, you know, in the karma kanda sense, why do we have to put them on such a pedestal? Uh, generally. We have to put the demigods on a pedestal because we are 
we are taking so much from them. They are, it's like, uh, you know, they are ministers. Um, just like in the government, you know, when the ministers, if a minister was to come to our town, they are given some recognition, they are given some respect um, because of their position. So the demigods, they have, uh, you know, high position, they are supplying their agents, supplying so much necessities of life. We can't just uh, ignore them. We can't just ignore them ordinarily. But if we understand that they are getting their powers, they are delegated authorities from Krishna, and we worship Krishna. And as Krishna Vani Mataji was saying, Bhagavatam gives the example, you know, if you pour water at the root, you know, it's no obligation to pour water on the leaves and the branches and the twigs. So that's the reason why, um, you know, it's just like if you are taking something from someone, and you do not, um, you know, offer them anything back, then you are like a thief because you're taking, you not. Uh, so ordinary people who are not surrendered to Krishna, they have great responsibility and obligation towards the demigods. And if they don't, they incur sin. But Krishna says, if you don't, you don't incur sin because I protect you. And by the way, everything comes from me anyway. So you are doing the right thing. You're pouring water on the root of the tree. Krishna is the root. Does that make sense, Janukandi? Hare Krishna, yes, Prabhu, very much so. So do we equate them with devote, few devotees? They, they, few devotees are more elevated than them then in that case. Well, the demigods are devotees, there's no doubt about that, because they are um, acting on behalf of Krishna. They are delegated authorities. Uh, some of them are pure, and some are not so pure. Oh. But they, are, they are devotees. Um, they are devotees, but um, not always pure. Mm. As we can see from Krishna book, uh, the example of Lord Indra. Hi, Bhavan. Thank you. And yet, we so many people worship the demigods as, as God. Yeah, therefore, Hi. Krishna says in the Gita, they are less intelligent. Hi, they are less intelligent. Thank you so much, Haribo. Moga Prabhu, you were going to say something. Um, Hare Krishna Prabhuji. So, so Brahma, he also mentions about the demigods that the Supreme Lord is not very much pleased with demigods because of their so many desires. So the one verse it mentions, uh, so they will come so many desires demigods immediately as soon as they feel some obstacle they will run away to a supreme personality of godhead my dear lord just please help us so likewise but they go only whenever they have desires Mm -hmm. So that is Brahma's play. And the demigods, they also, to get their power from the Supreme Lord, they also, uh, there are the number of verses they have recited uh, to get their power so that they carry out their duties. Mm -hmm. um, so it's just a small thing, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much for sharing that beautiful verse. Um, okay, so this, well, I think Oranga Gopi, we asked, we answered that question. Okay, Mataji. Okay, Hare Krishna.
Nilamitaji, thank you for your comment. Thank that you. is very powerful, Prabhuji. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Samadhura Radhika Mataji, thank you for your comment. Kuranga Gopi. Okay, fabulous. We'll conclude today. Thank you very much, everyone, for your attendance. Tomorrow uh, is half a day fasting. We are fasting for the appearance day of Lord Varaha. We are fasting for the appearance day of Lord Nityananda. Wednesday is the appearance day of Lord Nityananda. There's no half day fasting. We're doing the half day fasting tomorrow. And it's a Kadesi also. So half day fast and then a Kadesi for the rest of the day. And we don't fast on Wednesday, Lord Nityananda's appearance day. Okay. Happy Ekadasi, happy Tri Nityananda Triodashi, everyone, for this week. <coughs> Hare Krishna. Same to you, Prabhu. Hare, Hare Krishna. Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Prabhu. 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 Thank you, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.